Oh, hey there, friend. Over here. Yeah, come on over. Keep coming. A little closer. You're getting warmer. Right there. Now look up. Hi there. Oh, I was just spending the early part of the evening up here in this tree. Having a smoke, reading a book. Why up in the tree? Well, partly because I like it up here, and it's nice and shaded, and it's been hot as heck all day. But partly because it might look just a teensy bit suspicious for a three foot tall possum to be just sitting on a park bench reading a book and smoking a cigarette, yeah? I can't be just doing that sort of thing in front of everybody, you know? There'd be publicity. And cameras. And stress. And you know how I'm not really wired for stress. Though that reminds me of a story. Oh, hang on just a second. Let me stash this book and stub out the cigarette, and then I'll join you down on the ground. If I can shuffle my tubby gut down this tree trunk without embarrassing myself by falling. Oh, I got up here. I should be able to get back down, right? Oh. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. You got this, Red. You got this. You can do this. Oh, there we go. All safe and sound and back on the ground. That was a bit tougher than the climb up there. I just might need to go on the lightest sort of a diet. You can see I'm just a bit rounder than the last time we met up. Some of this is just leftover winter fat. But some of it would seem to be year-round fat. I guess that's what comes of a combination of eating like a dumpster and too much eating out of dumpsters. Ah, but the sun's finally setting. The air ought to cool off a bit soon. Let's go for a bit of a stroll. Over this way. This little park we're in is actually one end of a jogging trail. Not a well-frequented one, to be sure, but it does occasionally get used. Just not in the evenings as a rule. Shouldn't be too many people passing through. So what have you been about lately? It's been some time since we ran into each other. How's life? Yeah, that's good to hear. Really? Wish I'd have been there to see it. Oh, right. I was going to tell you about something that happened to me a few months back. Real exciting story. Well, part of it is. I got a job. Well, I mean, it's not a real job. I don't get a paycheck or punch a time clock or pay taxes or anything. It's more like a mutually beneficial arrangement. And I'm not really sure who gets the better end of it, but I'll take it. So, you know that little mom and pop grocery store where we got the iced coffees last time? Well, you'll remember me saying how the old couple that runs the place, how they know about me and my anomalous quirks and such, and how I occasionally drop by the place and buy stuff and maybe hang out now and again. Well, I was in the back room speaking with the lady of the establishment, when I noticed a bit of an odd scent in the air, sort of like vegetables about to go off. And without really thinking about it, I followed the scent to the source. And wouldn't you know it, some of the fresh produce they had in the place was on the verge of becoming not so very fresh. So the old lady sees me doing this, and figures out what's going on about the time I dig out the offending vegetables. She asked me if that's something I'd like to do on a regular basis, and if maybe I'd like to get paid for it. So we talked it over and worked up a deal, and now I get to go in there a couple times a week and sniff through all the fresh stuff and pull out anything that's nearing the end of its saleable life. I get to eat my fill of any of the stuff that's still good according to the less discriminating tastes of a possum's palate, but maybe wouldn't do to sell to ordinary folk. I even got a key to the back door, and some crates to stand on when locking up for the night. Oh, no, no. I go in there after hours. That way there's less chance of someone seeing this giant trash cat sorting through all the fruits and vegetables like it's his job. And it's all nice and sanitary, too. I make absolutely sure to wash my hands before and after handling the produce. Can't be risking any health code violations and such. 
Oh, that's another perk of the job. Access to the utility sink. Plenty of places all over the city where an honest and hard-working possum could catch a bath, but there's no stream or bird bath or backyard pond that matches the pure bliss of having hot water on tap. And the sink is the perfect size for me too. I can draw a nice hot bath to soak in, or just stand under the water and scrub. It's absolutely wonderful. And so long as I clean up everything afterwards, there's no one to know that a three foot tall talking possum is using the store's utility sink as a bathhouse. Except for the old folks running the place, of course, and naturally they're cool with it. Okay, so that brings me to the exciting part. A couple of weeks ago, I was in the store late, having just finished taking a glorious hot shower in the utility sink, and I'm just getting dried off when I hear what sounds for all the world like someone trying to stealthily jimmy the back door open with a crowbar. So I slip over to the door, and I'm pretty sure I can deal with whatever's on the other side of it, because I've got the element of surprise on my side, right? And I wait a moment, and when the time is just right, I carefully and quietly turn the lock on the door, and the next time the crowbar gets brought into play, the door just sort of swings open. And lo and behold, there in the doorway is some screwy fellow looking like Florida man's well-dressed cousin. Mind you, it's dark inside the place, and the guy isn't looking down, so he doesn't see me right away. Friend, I gave that man the scare of his life when I walked right up into the doorway and said, Hey, whose door is that? And when he looked down at me with his head all full of eyes and saw me in all my freshly scrubbed possum glory, that's what I went for him. I swung for him and started up a yell that would wake the dead. Come on, you black and tan. I've got rabies and a switchblade. Let's make incision to see whose blood is reddest, yours or mine. Hey! Come back here, you coward. I'm not done with you yet. I'll boil your teeth. Grr, froth, howl, spit, rabies, rabies. And so yelling, I gave in to the terrible battle fury of my ancient marsupial ancestors. And I chased that villain a good 60 feet down the alley behind the store. Then I had to stop and lean against the wall and take a breather. I'm not built for chasing down criminals. Tall as I am, my stubby little possum legs are not made for outrunning you long-legged featherless bipeds. I get tired just thinking about it. What? Oh, the burglar. Gone almost before I started yelling at him. Showed a remarkably clean pair of heels he did. I'm pretty sure he heard the bulk of what I said to him. But he didn't stick around to find out if I'd make good on any of it. Oh, right. What's he going to do? Tell the police? Uh, yes, officer. I was trying to break into a store last night when I was attacked by a three-foot-tall talking possum with a switchblade. Just think how crazy that's going to sound. Especially the part about the switchblade. Nobody's going to believe that story. Nah, I think the only thing that's going to happen to that fellow is that he's going to experience a whole lot of self-doubt and possibly develop some unhealthy coping mechanisms. Maybe he'll discover a newfound fear of small furry animals. Hey, uh, are you hungry, friend? I just remembered that the other end of this jogging path comes out just a block or two away from a really nice hamburger joint, and there's someone working there just now who owes me a favor. I can score us some freshly made burgers or some such, and all you'll have to do is stroll over there and pick them up. You'll love the place. It's called Kaiju Burgers. A mix of American burger culture with a healthy dose of Japanese culinary refinement. You got your phone handy? Let me see it a moment. Hello, is Lee there? Oh hey, it's Red. Red Lester. Yeah, I gotta order the place. Remember you said you could score some grub for me? Great. I'll have the burger roar with extra bacon and... Hang on a second. Hey, friend. 
Have you got any food allergies? Any personal or religious dietary restrictions I need to know about? Hmm. I know just the thing. Lee? Yeah, the burger roar with extra bacon and the number eight combo without all the extra frills. Burger fries drink, that's it. I'm sending a friend over to pick it up. They'll be there in maybe 15 minutes. They'll tell you I sent them. Thanks, Lee. You are the best. All set. There's your phone back, friend. Yeah, I know how to use phones. At least, well enough to get by on. I don't keep one myself, you understand. But the knowledge comes in handy now and again, as you've just witnessed. All right. We ought to be getting to the end of this path in another ten minutes. And then I can steer you in the general direction of Kaiju Burgers. Like I said, you're going to love the food. But in the meantime, why not tell me a bit more about what you've been up to lately? I like a good story before a meal, so let's hear one. 